Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. Today's video is a little different. I was recently recruited to go help with a new YouTube channel that's dedicated to exploring interesting places with interesting stories and I thought you guys might like to see the first look at it. So here's the first full length episode. If you like what you see, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so you can go check out the new channel. All right, let's just jump straight into this. Everybody knows these little fossils as trilobites, but that's not the problem. The problem here is they're known by another name and it kind of breaks the historical timeline. I'm here at UDIG Utah, not just because there are millions of trilobites everywhere just waiting for you to pick them up and take them home, but because just a couple miles from here, there was a Native American gravesite where one of the inhabitants who was exhumed had something peculiar embedded in his chest. A trilobite with holes drilled into it. Frank Beckwith was the archeologist that we're talking about. And in the early 1900s, there weren't a lot of resources if you found odd ancient Native American artifacts in a grave that you were exhuming. So he went to one of his friends who happened to be a member of the local Ute tribe. Now his friend, Joseph Pickivit, immediately recognized this as a trilobite amulet. And they weren't even that rare. But the interesting thing about this amulet was that its name means something that by historical records shouldn't be able to mean what it means. Tempe Kanitsa Pachavi was the name of this amulet. And he said that they were common for protection against illnesses and bullets. But the translation of that word means little water bug in stone house. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not anywhere near water. In fact, this entire area is a desert for miles in every direction. The problem isn't that they got the name accurate. Water bugs is more or less what they are. The problem is if you look around where they came from, there's no reason why they should have known that they were water bugs. Let's break down the historical timeline to show you what I mean. 500 million years ago, most of North America is underwater. This is when trilobites first emerge. They are alive for 250 million years. Now, that overlaps with the formation of North America, which happened around 300 million years ago, but shortly afterwards, they go extinct. Now at this stage, the west coast of the United States is starting to form, but this area that we're in is still completely covered in what is known as the Western Interior Seaway, and it is for another 44 million years. Now you might be thinking, maybe they have some sort of record from early people living at this time, but if you're doing the math, this is way before human beings as we know them are walking around, let alone any type of written record. Now this is where the plot thickens. 30,000 years ago, this was all covered by Lake Bonneville, from here all the way up until the Great Salt Lake. The problem is though, by the time Lake Bonneville had dried up, it would still be a thousand years before the first Native Americans arrive, at least as far as our archeological records show. So how could they have possibly known that they were water bugs then? Now, there's a couple theories put forth. Some of them are better than others, but I wanna see what you think. The King's Archeological Survey was 1860, which certainly overlaps with Native American tribes being here. And it means that they could have talked about the existence of trilobites and where they came from. That was something that was relatively well known around the world at that point. The problem is experts at the time really did believe that this word, little sea bug in a stone house dates back hundreds of years, much farther back than the King survey. Another possible explanation is the distance to Lake Sevier. It's only 20 miles and it is dried up, but maybe they made the connection that this area could have been underwater. These might've been water bugs, but there's one solution that makes more sense, even though at first blush seems foolish. And that's that they just looked at them and said, these look like water bugs. Let's see what the guys here at UDIG have to say. But like Lake Severe, that was never at like a high enough elevation or like the water depth wasn't high enough to like, I don't think influence any of their decisions on calling these like trilobites water bugs. Cause this is pretty far pressed up here in the Paiutes like kind of solely hung out in like this area. There's not really an explanation. They, they found surface trilobites and they put them on jewelry and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, their word was just water bug, which is like you said, water bug in a stone house. And like, nobody really knows. There's no like record for why they like 
had that intuition to call them that or like anything like that. Maybe that is, that's an interesting like idea of like correlation is just like maybe because it's close to the severe lake that that might be a reason. Uh -huh. And they hypothesized that that because of the, the proximity to the lake there, that they, these trilobite fossils kind of looked like water insects that, yeah. that were not extinct, like currently living. Yeah, because actually- Do you think there's a reasonable connection there? Like yes, I do because there's a creature called a triop. Oh. And it's like a shrimp. And if you look up a picture of a triop, it actually looks incredibly similar to a trilobite. Really? So they could have seen the triops mm -hmm. and then like wh wherever else they're exploring or kind of away from the lakes, they see these trilobite fossils and they could have just made that connection. That's literally what I'm thinking. But look at this. Oh, look those just are like a trilobite. What? They just have like bigger tails. Th so those are, uh... and they're from this area? Yeah, yeah. They said that they found it in like a body of water just like a couple miles west of here. So. I heard them make the correlation between like insects, like water insects, like on the on the lake and trilobites, but they didn't extrapolate. That's a that. thought I had never <laughs> arrived that before. That's kind of interesting. So there we have it. Maybe the geological timeline isn't broken and there is actually a reasonable explanation after all. Let me know in the comments below what you believe the answer is and I'm gonna dig up some fossils. Come with me. So all this rock that we're standing on right now is, uh, is a sedimentary rock. And it's called shale. So every time you pick up a piece of shale, you'll be able to find two flat sides of the rock and then a side where the layers are running back and forth. So sometimes it's like vague cracks or kind of sediment lines as indications to kind of tell which sides are the flat sides and then the side where you can see those layers. Um, and basically all you're trying to do is split those layers apart because that's where the trilobites are at. So you take your hammer, you're gonna be using pretty much only the chisel end of your hammer. There's not really a lot of use to the blunt end while you're out here. But you're gonna take that chisel end, take that cross section side face up at you like this, and then you basically just wanna strike it right in the middle and then it flakes off like this. And that wasn't like a great split, but you just like work through the rock as much as you can. And then you look at the exposed faces that you make because that's where the trilobites are gonna be. Like there's the tail of an asophiscus right there. Just these things existed yeah. on the planet for 270 million years without interruption. It's just so. kind of like an endless little pocket. Yeah, I, and I think so. I mean, we know that the shelf itself, the Wheeler shelf, is about like 12 acres. There's probably more to this formation, but the rest of it just goes underground. Yeah. Um, but they existed, the three main reasons why there's so many of them is they existed for 270 million years without interruption, which is way longer than any species has ever had the planet yeah. to themselves. Um, <clears throat> They were the first socially perceptive creatures, so they stayed close together. And then also they lived on top of a really, really fine clay sediment that was fantastic, like medium for fossilization. For fossilization, to yeah. Exactly. And so 270 million years of life and death on a perfect like substrate for them to be fossilized. And they also stayed real close together. It's like, we just got a lifetime supply. <laughs> it's and more. It's, it's like unbelievable. Like, it's weird. Yeah. See that guy? Little, little molt of an Alrathia right there. That's a decent one. Oh, He's nice. real small, but 